Hello Tinkerers and welcome to today's video. We're going to look at contour maps today. What do I mean by contour maps? I mean maps with lines. But how is that 3D you say? Well when I'm talking about 3D contour maps I'm looking at things like this. Ones that show landscape but then have them in layers. My specialty about today we're going to hopefully do one for Mars. So how am I going to go about that? Well first off I need the ground. So I'm going to basically make the ground a full size of my work plane. So I'm just going to grab a box, make it 200 by 200 because I know that's how big my work plane is. 200 there, 200 there. And then I'm going to make it five high. And that's something good to remember. So make it five high. And then the base of Mars is going to be definitely a dark brown color because the colors of reds are going to come on top. Maybe even what I can do is I can click on this and I can even go to custom colors and custom colors to the A and I can make it even darker. There you go, really dark brown. Now, that's my ground. I don't want that to move anywhere. So what you can do is once you've selected it, you can go up to the top right hand corner and up here there is a lock. And I'm going to lock that down. So there you go. Can't move it, can't shift it, and it is locked. I can always unlock it at any point by just clicking on the padlock, but first off, I want to make a nice solid base. If you're more advanced, you can make this base in any different shape that you want, but today's shape, we're just gonna stick with a nice square ground because that's my hang. Okay, next I need to create these contours, these nice organic shapes that kind of go in and out and start to create these valleys and mountains on my map. So how am I gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna start using the scribble tool. I'm gonna to drop that right in the middle. And it puts a bird's eye view looking directly down onto a work plane. And this is going to be how I'm going to draw a scribble tool. Now, considering my map's a square, and this is a square, it should be nice and easy. Now, I've got a draw tool that only draws a single line. I've got my rubber, and then I've got these two. It's draw a shape or a razor shape. I want to select draw a shape, because this basically fills in my shape as I draw it. And I'm gonna start the top left-hand corner. So I'm gonna draw a nice organic shape out, around, flowing about, over my map, nice and organic. And I'm gonna make sure I go over my lines, make sure I go too far, because it's easier to trim down than to fill in. So I've got, here's my first bit, and then I'm also going to do one at the bottom. So I'm gonna kind of create this individual wavy map. Then I'm gonna fill it in right at the bottom, make sure I go all the way around, fill it in. Now it doesn't look all that good at the moment, but it's going to give me something to work from. So from there, it's drawing it in a nice square, and all I need to do is now enlarge it so it goes over the sides of my map. And there you go, I've got my first part of my contour. This is exactly 10 high, that's perfect, because I've got my base is five, this is 10. It's a horrible color at the moment, blue, so I'm gonna make it my first deep red, and I'm gonna make that nice and dark. Custom it, I'm gonna make it nice and dark. It's gonna be my deep red, it's gonna be my, my bottom layer. And that kind of gives you an idea about what lines you will need to recreate moving up the shape. Make this bigger. So it just fills in a gap. I might just move it that way. I quite like. There we go. So I've got it. So it takes out all my shapes and it goes over the edge. So that's not a problem anymore. Okay, my next layer, I'm going to use the shape generator. In the shape generator, I've got this extrusion shape. You might find it in more shapes. I've got it as one of my favorites. I'm gonna bring that on, I'm gonna put it at the top, and then I'm going to make it, it's 20 high at the moment. This is five high, this is 10 high, so this needs to be 15 high, because each layer is gonna go up by five, so 15. And at 15 high, and then I'm going to think about what color I want my next layer to be. So I'll probably want it to be nice dark orange. So start with an orange, and then I can go to custom, and I can make it a bit darker on the orange. So there we go. Now then, using this extrusion tool, I'm going to build up the second layer of my contour. And I can do that in multiple ways. One, I'm going to generate and duplicate this lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of times. And I can keep doing this until I'm happy. And I'm basically gonna bring these on. I'm gonna to start to kind of fill in my second layer. And I'm gonna bring them on and hopefully kind of roughly get the right shape 
for this bottom, this second layer of my contour. So just kind of looking from above, it's kind of going to work around here and it's going to kind of come out a bit. Now the reason I've chosen to use extrusion and not cylinders is basically it allows me to first off just get, get roughly the right shape. But then it allows a lot more flexibility with what shape it actually generates. Because this isn't really a very organic piece. So here I've kind of roughly got the right sort of film. But then you'll notice this appears on the right hand side in the working box. And it will appear for each one of these shapes. And what it allows you to do is basically change and mold the shape to any shape you want. So you can see that one, the one I've got selected. As I move this around it kind of flows and manipulates itself. Um, I mean, I can get this a twist as well. And you see how I can slowly start to work and kind of try and create this organic shape that I'm looking for with this piece. And I can obviously fill in the little gaps and get them smaller. I'm going to slowly work on this and try and work and get my second layer contour so it's nice and fluid. And there isn't any of these hard sharp corners. It's all like one big flowing shape just like my first layer. So give me a bit of time, let's double quick it. How's that looking? For quickness, that is brilliant. As I say, you can spend as long as you want on it and as much time as you want on it. Obviously I'd do that for this side and I would do it for both sides of my canyon. What I can then do is grab, select my big red box. It will select the bits I've got locked, but I can hold shift and unselect them. And then I can group them together and all these random lines that have appeared will work together and magically disappear in creating my second layer of my contours. There you go, and I've kind of got my next layer of my contour line. Now I'm going to leave that up there because I'm going to obviously at some point fill in and do my other side of a canyon. But what I want to show you is obviously the next layer of the contours. I am then going to get my extrusion tool, extrusion shape, sorry. And then this time it's going to be 5, 10, 15, 20 high, isn't it? And it's already 20 high. It's going to be a slightly lighter color because as you notice, basically the higher it goes up, the lighter it gets. So what am I going to go for this time? I'm going to go for a lighter orange, but I want it to be kind of on the light side. There we go. I think that'll look nice. So then again, I can duplicate that lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of times. And this again is going to allow me to manipulate it. And then I'm basically going to put it down and I'm going to look at doing my next layer so this is going to be my next layer obviously that's a bit of an intrusion i can instantly just flatten that off a bit work on the edges a bit here we go let's get okay get lots, lots of them down just work on a shape just roughly get the right pattern and then as i say once i've got a roughly it filled in and i can slowly work on the individual features. Yeah, it's kind of okay. I can say I can put a few more in just to make me happy. If I want to make sure I'm not moving that layer, then obviously I can put the lock on it with a layer below. So that's now locked as well as a layer below, a layer below that. It helps a lot when I'm slowly moving or manipulating all these shapes around. And then I'm just going to Think about how I want this to look. All right. Once I've got roughly the shape I'm looking for in the next layer, and this time I'm going to start to again fill in the little bits and make it nice and smooth and make these organic shapes by manipulating these sides to really kind of just get it so it doesn't look like I'm just generating and maneuvering a random piece. All right. Let's double quick time it and let's hopefully see how quickly I can make this second, no, yeah, this third layer really smooth. Now 
that is looking pretty good on my front. As I say, it looks a mess at the back, but don't worry about that. We'll clean it up right at the end. I could keep going on with multiple layers and keep with my contour lines, but I'm going to just stick with three different layers at the moment. Might even work on my colors. If I'm not happy with this base layer, then I can even change the color even when it's locked. So I can go to presents. I want these oranges, but I want it obviously to be really quite a dark, so it kind of graduates up. There we go. Is that better? That red was making it too much. A good thing. There we go. Very happy with that. All right. It's up to you now to build your layers. I'm going to quickly put together this second side, and then I will jump back in and show you how to clean up. Okay, there you go. I have got some lovely layered contour lines. I think I should add an extra layer. I think it would really finish it off. But that is something I can do in my spare time. What I want to do now is I want to clean up these edges. So first off, let's just delete my palette. And then I'm going to go back to basic shapes. And I'm just going to grab that whole box. And I'm going to literally draw a nice big box down this side. And I'm going to make sure I'm just going to trim off the edge. And I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to move it across to the other edge. So nicely fits on. And then I'm going to duplicate another one. I'm going to get that one. And I'm going to put it across the back. So nicely fits. And I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to bring that one across to this side to make it. And I'm going to, once I've done that, what I need to do is I just need to make sure these are unlocked because it won't allow you to trim them if they are locked. So just unlock all the pieces. You lock down so you just don't have to mess around with it. I think that's all of them. Did I lock this one? Nope. There we go. So nice big select. Select all of everything on the work plane and then do one big group. This will make them all the same color, but then you can quite easily turn it back to multicolor in a second. There you go, one color, but then just go to shape, go to multicolor and it puts it all back. And there you go. I have got a contour map. I can obviously build on this once I'm happy with it. I can work on improving it even more. I could go back to my extrusions. I think I might add another layer to really kind of make it pop. So if obviously it's 5, 10, 15, 20, and then I bring this one up to 25. Make it nice and light. That's a color palette I've been using, but when I've been customizing it to make it slightly here we go, put in the right color scheme. And I think if I have that one on top, I think it'll really finish it off nicely. But as for you to do, and then you can start to put buildings on here. You could obviously go for a green palette scheme and you could design earth. But this is up to you, tinkerers. Good luck with your tinkering. Here you go, tinkerers. I just thought I'd show you what happened once I put my extra layer on. I have got a lovely design. Really looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Let's get them creative minds and let's get some landscapes contoured. Good luck.